Welcome to this episode of the Whole Health and Rob Carney Podcast. This show is here to highlight professionals in the world of entrepreneurship, personal development, and health and wellness. So today we have my brother Alex Dory is back for round three. We've been very consistent with these episodes just about once a year since the birth of this podcast. He was one of my first guests. I've known him for, man, since about 2014, 2015. We did a number of classes together at UMass Amherst. And in this episode... We're a little bit different. We're talking about some different things. Typically, we talk about all things mushrooms, but here we're talking about some spirituality, different daily practices, business, you know, worldly evolution. We're talking about mushrooms for the fall and winter. And of course, you know, we do talk about the beautiful Mushroom Revival products. He's got some new launches that have just launched as you're listening to this podcast in the past few days, few weeks, depending on when you're listening to this. So you can always check that out at MushroomRevival.com and use the discount code WHOLEHEALTH and that will save you 15% off every single order. So check them out. Hope you enjoy the show. If you haven't listened to the first couple episodes, I will put those links in the show notes here or you can go to WholeHealthConnects.com slash podcast and do a little control F if you're on a, a PC or command F to find Alex Store on that page. So looking forward to having you enjoy this episode and here we go. All right, my brother. Well, I'm happy to have you here today. It's been over a year now since our last conversation. We're pretty much hitting the the one year mark on these podcasts on the dot. This is now the third edition. I think we did the first one in October of 2019. We did the last one very end of October of 2020, and here we are in the middle of November. So we're uh, we're pretty consistent with these yearly podcast episodes. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm I'm looking forward to the next one and the next one. It it felt like yesterday that we were sitting in. Sarah Burquist's class. Um, what year was that? That was like 2000... 2015, I think. Wow, so long ago. It's been a wild, a wild ride, brother. It has. You know, it's funny. I was just doing a little bit of stretching before we hopped on here, and I was like, "Man, it brings me back to those yoga for farmer days." I'm about to chat with Alex Door, doing a little Hell stretching yeah. on my yoga mat. Like everything's coming full circle. It's funny how all these things work together. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have you on this on this ride. It's good to have people, you know, I feel like as each gen- generation uh, arises, people are getting more and more disconnected, right? Definitely. You know, we're getting more sucked into our screens. It's good to have like long-term relationships that you could, you can um, look back on real world events and not like, oh, remember that social media post I made? Right. It's going to be nuts that, you know, it, these next generations is just going to lack that human connection. I mean, we're, we're on zoom right now, but yeah. Metaverse coming soon. To I was a podcast say, near you. Right. I was going <laughs> to say pretty soon we're going to be in the metaverse and we're just going to be having our NFTs having these conversations. So that's a, I think that's a, hopefully a little bit down the road, but you know, dude, it's, it's the world is moving. And at the end of the day, I think we can fight it or we can move with it. And I think that's something that I, I'm always impressed with how you've gone about things is you, you move with the flow, you're on the flow, you're riding the wave of life. And, and I was mentioned before is every podcast we've done, we have really dove into mushroom revival. But before we get into mushroom revival today, I want to go a little bit into Alex door, get the people to know you a little bit. So Outside of Mushroom Revival, how have the past two years of this bit of a whirlwind that the, the world has been in, how yeah. has that been for you? You know, what have you been up to? Dude, it's from the get-go, we moved to Austin, Texas. So we moved, I want to say in end of May um, in 2020. So COVID was fresh um, on the scene and we moved across country from Massachusetts we packed up uh, my car and just fit everything in. And, uh, and so that was interesting to move in the middle of a pandemic, especially in a new city that you didn't know. But Austin has been treating us super well. I mean, it's such a cool, hip city. And we moved into our first place. Uh, and we were there for, I don't know, six, eight months, something like that. Um, and now we're rebuilding. and. It was a really cool place to live, and now we're in another house, uh, a little south of the of downtown, and it's really cool. I mean, we're in suburbia, so but we have like a forty acre nature preserve right nice. down the street from us, so it's cool. super nice. I mean, really awesome dog park. We just got a puppy, and so most of my 
my day to day is just being a puppy dad. And, you know, <laughs> it's so good, especially when most of the world is super stressed out right now and, and a little cold, a little closed off having this organism that has unconditional love that has no idea there's a pandemic going on, right? you know, has no idea about politics, has no idea about anything. It's just so happy to see you and every other human has like no trauma. So loving. It's so good to hang out with that type of organism. And just like, yeah, of course. Why can't we all be like, you know, these great dogs that can teach us some of the best lessons. So what's the pup's name? Echo. So EKO. And then we, she has a bunch of nicknames. We call her Gecko. That's probably the, the top nickname, but, um, Ico when she's doing something gross, like throwing up or eating poop or something. Um, Gek, I don't know. There's a million nicknames, but, but mostly it's Echo or Gecko. It's funny how dog nicknames just evolve. So my parents' dog, Nala, that was her name. And yeah, there's so many it like Nolly, not like it became Nolly, and then became like noodles, like Nolly noodles became like yeah. all these little very it's just funny how dogs just they're, like they're so playful and loving, they just deserve all these nicknames. Yeah, for it's, sure. <laughs> it's for a funny sure. little thing. Oh. Yeah, so that's been good. And we're actually training her to be a truffle dog. And I she's like that. six, she's six months, so she's still learning, but she had she's like 75% border, or I mean a uh, golden retriever, 25% border collie. And border collies are the most, the smartest dogs on the planet. And they're trained to hunt and herd. And, you know, um, so we have all these puzzle toys for her and she's super smart. And so that I think is like the best task that we can give her is to look for mushrooms. And she's, she's, we've taken her out like mushroom hunting and she's without any training, she goes after mushrooms and Mm. she sniffs them out. She wants to eat them. She's all about the smell of mushrooms. So that is an easy first start. We just have to train her not to eat them and to search for the right one. So we're super pumped. Well, it sounds like she fits right in with the mushroom revival family, man. She's a yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty good representative. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool, man. So, you know, you got the puppy puppy going on. You got the move to Austin, Texas. What have, how has like the, the work been? How, how many hours you work and what do you, have you been able to do stuff outside of owning a business and having a pup what have what have you been up to and <laughs> because those are yeah, two different it, things it's it's funny you know um i'm a huge traveler and so it's been weird being kind of locked down we we slipped to costa rica for a, a tiny bit but pretty much have been in lockdown and we went to colorado for some mushroom events but um yeah we're we're really hoping that all the lockdowns end so we can actually start traveling again. That's, that's a big part of my life. And what I'm, I'm really excited about is just traveling the world and going to cool new places, meeting cool new people, having new experiences. That's what brings me a lot of joy in life. Um, but yeah, we've been just locking it down, uh, you know, making some really good food, hanging out with good friends, prioritizing what's really important. I think this pandemic really showed me like one who my true friends are right Mm -hmm. and um you know yeah who who, what's really important in my life and and not trying to spin so many plates I have a tendency where I spin way too many plates and then I'm just (laughs) on the verge of burnout like I'm one centimeter away from burnout, but I ride that edge for so long until I eventually burn out. And then I got to recover. And then I ride that again. And it's this grind where it's like, I don't have to spin that many plates, but it's this adrenaline junkie in me. It's this like ingrained capitalism that has been pushed down my throat since birth of like, you need to do, do, do. and, And rest is like not like be, just chilling, you just existing is yep. somewhat shameful. Um, and that was like pushed down my throat since birth, you know? And so it's, it's been a, a practice of doing what's the most important priorities, you know, what is filling my cup up the most, what's the most important things that I could do in my day, in my day and the rest of the day, 
relax, you know, and, and that I'm learning in this pandemic. I think that has been the biggest practice for me of prioritizing what are the most, like eating good food, surrounding myself with good people, you know, and, and just filling my cup up and, and doing the most important work and the rest, just relax, be a good human, you know, take it easy, kick your feet up, do the best you can, you know? I love it, brother. You know, I'm in a very similar boat the past six months or so have really been me letting go of the things that aren't really serving me. Cause same thing. Um, if I'm spinning eight plates and I say, well, I can probably fit another half a plate on there. I might not be able to fit a whole plate, but let me get a, a quarter of a plate. And I'm just always trying to fill that to it's like to the 99% of, of capacity. So I've been recognizing that. And just like you said, like a lot of times I would have that guilt and still do sometimes when I'm not working. It's like, like you yeah. said, that shame. And it's like, I'm not being productive. Oh man, this, and then just that negative thought pattern of not being good enough, not doing enough. And then it's like, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm yeah. not resting, but I'm not achieving anything either. It's like this purgatory of just absolute chaos because nothing's good happening, but I'm not recovering from it either. Yeah. 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 I mean, you ask like, you know, how many hours do I work? And I used to work close to a hundred hour weeks, seven days a week, nonstop from the second I woke up to the second I went to bed. And I would probably still be working in my dream world, (laughs) (laughs) fixing problems, all this stuff. (laughs) And now I don't, I, I intentionally cut myself off and I, I intentionally have weekends and I try as hard as I can not to work on weekends. And it, it is an intention that I'm bringing this time around. And I'm, being okay that things are going to take a little bit longer, right? Um, You know, I might not get the projects done as quickly as I did when I was working 100 hour weeks, but that's okay. You know, I'm at least I have my health and my sanity. (laughs) And I can be a good person, you know, when I'm, when I was working that hard, it was really hard to also be patient. And, and when conflict arose, I, I, would get angry a lot easier and, you know, would be quick to say something I didn't mean or to be kind of a little bit rash because it was just in this go, go, go mentality. And just realizing like, if I'm, if I'm having this wellness company and I'm, I'm not an example of wellness, then what, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was like this big, kind of uh realization in 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 the pandemic was like oh yeah i gotta i i have to be an example of wellness and and i can't be this like crazy chicken with his head cut off (laughs) trying to shove wellness down people's throats i mean it's just not gonna work so uh and i'm still learning and i'll I'll, uh, i'll keep learning for the rest of this lifetime you know right well it's funny you say that because i i wrote a ebook on stress and sleep um this is probably a year and a half or two years ago and i remember finished writing it i was like this is probably the most stress and worst sleep i've had in a while but sometimes right? we, we like we work on the things that we need so that's right. where that fuel comes from i was like i but i didn't i wasn't even aware of that until i finished it and i was like wait a second i wrote this from a place of extreme stress and not sleeping well but it's you know sometimes that's exactly what we need to do and you know big right. thing that i share with people is these periods of imbalance aren't inherently a bad thing. Like it's, it's a learning curve. And that's where sometimes, you know, we put a lot of effort in to get us to the next phase. And then we can go through the period of rest. It's if we're constantly in that go, go, go or on the flip side, constantly in that, I'm just going to chill and, you know, let right. me. it's, it's right. a fine balance and we go through waves. And that's something I tell people is like, you know, when I first started my business about three years ago, I was working 80 hour weeks for the first few months. And then I realized, hey, this isn't very sustainable, but I needed that, that like launch, like right. you think of like a plane at launch, use like 60% of the fuel at takeoff. And then it's, you know, then it's at a little bit more Cruise. of a out out. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And it's good for me. It's one thing to read something in the book, in a book, or, you know, I, I study philosophy and it's one thing to sit around and talking about a concept, but I have to live it. Right. And part of me of like starting my own business or like working those hundred hour weeks or whatever. It's like, I actually need to experience that 
if I'm ever going to give people advice on how to not do that or how to live an easier or more balanced life, I need to live the crazier life to have any sort of comprehension of what's that, what is that like, right? Um, Because I can think about it and I can think how much that would be draining, but to actually live it and to actually burn out through that, to actually, you know, that's a whole different story and that's in your DNA. Like that is in every atom of your body. You, you know what that's like. So right. yeah, I'm not saying everyone should go and do that, but. <laughs> you know, it, but that's part of the human experience too. I think that it's important for us to have those experiences. Like you said, cause you can read a book about meditation all day and watch a bunch of videos, but until you actually sit down with your thoughts it, it's a whole nother ball game to, to be like, Oh yeah, just clear your mind. Cause you read like, and you can't really clear your mind. And that's something I really accept is like, Hey, for me, the goal of meditation isn't necessarily clear my mind. It's to just be able to be with myself and not need to be stimulated all the time. And obviously there's a million different forms of meditation that people can practice with, but you know, it's, it's experiential learning. And that's a big thing I've realized over the past three years of being in business for myself is like, Hey, I can read these books all day. I can read the best marketing things. I can read the best copywriting, you know, whatever the concept is, but until I actually do it, that's where the learning really comes in. It's, it's in those experiences. So, you know, we're, we're just getting better every day, brother. And that's part of, part of life. So the roller coaster that we're on, you know, it, it, that's like, I mean, it, most people tell you that you learn a lot in business school, but until you actually run a business, that's, that's when the real learning starts. And I noticed this a lot because uh, we would get interns, you know, from our local business school and you could just tell they didn't, they didn't have much real world experience or that grit or just, you know, they read it in a book of the best practices, but they didn't know how to implement it or uh, yeah, I, I would, I always would joke with people that I was in, you know, a, uh, a speed round MBA program <laughs> of, uh, you know, doing a startup. It's, and it's not for everyone. And, and I think this goes on to the, the greater lesson of, you know, find what works for you. And this mm-hmm. goes on to whether what job you have, or, you know, if, if you're an entrepreneur of whether that's for you or what you want to make in your business or, or your wellness practice, right? Is meditation for you? Right. Like I, I think everyone should meditate, but at the same time, that might not be for you in that moment, right? And and uh, you know, if you are the person that is lazy and and says, oh, "I'm going to chill on the couch all day every day," then maybe a little fire might be for you. Or if you're burning all both candles at the candle at both ends, then maybe some chill might be what you need and just finding finding what works for you and it's funny also during this pandemic i've i've shifted my own wellness practice of Mm. uh because i was the person burning the candle at both ends i would also bring my own quote-unquote wellness routine into that same uh like mind frame Mm. of oh i need i need to meditate and I need to do kundalini yoga and then I need to go running and then I need to go sauna and then I need to take blah 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 and then I need to do this and I need to do qigong all in this routine I packed in hours a day and I was like going crazy doing this insane routine that totally defeated the purpose made a chore list <laughs> I made a chore list and it was just a another to-do list uh, yeah and I was I was forcing I was forcing wellness and at, and now I've been practicing. What if I just drop everything? Mm-hmm. And I have, I like, I stop working out. I stop meditating. I stop doing everything intentionally seeing what comes naturally. Right. And if something comes naturally, then I'll let it happen. And on the flip side of not trying to label anything good and bad, like I let myself play video games and like binge play video games with the intention of like being conscious of watching myself do that and seeing, okay, well, what let's accept this reality. And, you know, that's part, that was part of my meditation. And, uh, 
we get caught in this Western framework of like this, this rose color glasses of like good vibes only, you know, and like, I, I can't have any like pesticides. I can't have any of this and I can't have any of that. And you get caught in this loop where, you know, you're missing the point. Like medit- a lot of meditation practice is just accepting what is right. And being here now with whatever arises good or bad, quote unquote. And so in your life as well, like if you want to eat a Twinkie one day, like go for it and be aware of all everything that went into it and be aware that you are eating that. Um, yeah. And g- kind of from the first thing you said, go with the flow because <laughs> we are consciousness being conscious of consciousness itself. And so every experience is a new learning, right? And every experience, whether, I mean, yeah, is, is a moment of teaching, um, and is a, it can be a lesson. And the more that we avoid things, maybe that's something that you should go into, right? If you're, if, 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 yeah, if you're avoiding something so much, then maybe that's the thing that you need. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's like the dark, yeah. the cave that you're afraid to enter, enter is a cave that you need to explore. And, and, you know, one thing I love that you're saying, this is what I say with like all my coaching clients, like, we're building a toolbox. It's not that there's one skeleton key. It's not that you meditating every single day for 20 minutes in a full lotus position is going to solve all your problems. That's a tool for your toolbox. And it's not going to be applicable every single day for every single scenario. And just like you said, you know, it's how can we use these tools that we've accumulated and then, and then go through life and say, all right, I have this toolbox. Now, when I come against this, I got a tool for that. I come against this. I got a tool for that. But I was in the same boat where my wellness practice became a chore list. And then it became more stressful to actually do the thing that's supposed to de-stress me, causing more stress. And I was getting down on myself because like, oh, now I'm not doing it right. And it was just like this whole spiral. And now it's like you said, I don't have a sit still meditation practice. But when I feel myself getting stressed or feel myself like I need a little reboot, I will sit down and do a meditation, which typically ends up being, you know, two to five times per week, depending on where I'm at, you know? So I think that it's, it's how can we utilize these tools in an effective way that fits with our lifestyle without causing more stress? Cause we're already doing so much. We're already so overstimulated, but if we just add more doing that sometimes actually isn't the best thing for us. Yeah. It, it, it can be an ego trip too, right? Because I I get in this trip all the time, um, and I was in super deep, and I I still am. Of you know, you get in this trip of okay, well, if I meditate, that means I'm a good person, or that means I'm a spiritual person, or it means right. I'm like on this higher level, this Labels. higher, all this stuff, and you get in this whole trip of like you're going through the motions, but you're not doing the thing. You're not, you're missing the whole point (laughs) or Hey, I, I, I take psychedelics. Therefore I'm more evolved or kind or I do all this wellness stuff. Therefore I'm better. But the whole time you're sitting in Lotus position, you're just like on that whole train of thought or like thinking about the groceries you're going to buy. And and then you checked it off your list. You're like, I meditated today. Therefore I'm a good person. It's like, no, uh, you know, it may be, (laughs) maybe, but I met some great people who their quote unquote meditation practice is like drinking a Pepsi at the end of the day and sitting on the couch. And honestly, they were pretty balanced and like really good person, like really amazing, had tons of empathy. We're a great person, but, but this framework, I mean, there's a lot of people that would label that as quote unquote bad, you know, drinking soda on the couch. Like that's, that's not health and wellness, whatever, but, uh, or that's not the, you know, um, whatever it is. So yeah, I, it's, it's complicated, you know, and this is something in yoga that I think it's diluted is a lot of people look at the asana or like the actual postures and get so fixated on making sure they're doing the right postures or make it seem like they're looking like they're doing yoga. Right. Um, 
but they're not actually practicing yoga. And, um, and this is for everything. Right. And, and I see this a lot, um, you know, with, with mushrooms, magic mushrooms are becoming super popular psilocybin mushrooms. And there's tons of people entering the space, whether making their own company or eating them and they never integrate the experience. Right. And they're having one mushroom trip after the other, or they're having one ayahuasca trip after another in this guise that somehow eating mushrooms makes you a good person. I think it can definitely help, but you can also get in this trip of because I am somewhat associated with that. Therefore I am more evolved or I am more conscious or whatever. And they, and they never actually process their trauma or right. PTSD or baggage. They never actually do the work. And me included, I do that all the time. Like I I'm as guilty as anyone. And, uh, and it's something that I, I'm hearing more and more people talk about, which I'm really excited about is how important integration is yes. of not, not just jumping to the next ceremony or jumping to the next thing. Um, you know, we're, we're taught in, in this Western culture, a lot of times to just pop a pill and uh, not actually do the work, but pop a pill, all the symptoms go away. Uh, but the root problem, like we were never, most people weren't really taught to tackle root problems, right? right. Um, it's just like pop a pill and, and that's, that's what you got. And for some people, they have so much trauma that that's okay, right? A microdose is okay. Like that's one baby step as long as you keep going, right? right. And I think like mushroom re revival, for example, like we say all the time, you know, we make functional mushroom products, but that's just a baby step, right? You know, you could take functional mushrooms every day. You could pop a capsule or take a tincture, but still in your mind, you could have all these negative thought patterns and, you know, still be an, a, an unhealthy person. Um, and so it's just one step in the right direction. I think it's an easy, like sub five second routine. It's, it's getting that momentum going, right. As you're talking about the plane analogy, I've, I've, I've heard of people talk about like pushing a, a car in neutral mm. The first, like push is really hard, but once you get going, you got that momentum going. And so anything to get, to make that first push a little bit easier, I think is great, you know, and everyone's at their different stages of their own journey and, you know, any little nudge in the right direction with, with the least amount of resistance, I think is great. You know, even, even all the examples I just talked about, at, at least they're in some sort of momentum 100%. going, you know? Yeah. You know, I was just recently a guest on my buddy's podcast It's called this one time on psychedelics. And, you know, we were having a great conversation and I was saying on that, like, it makes me very excited that psychedelics are becoming widely accepted as a culture now. And, you know, by widely accepted, I mean, now it's like, you can talk about it and not be shunned or, you know, deemed a druggie or whatever the labels are. But it also, I really advise people to proceed with caution because of this quick fix. I think a lot of people underestimate the power of this medicine, which is what it is. There is a reason why these things are called plant medicines. They're they're medicines that have immense power, immense wisdom, and we need to be mindful of that use. And, and like you were saying, one thing I always recommend to people is get very in tune with yourself as best you can before going into something like that, because whatever you're experiencing on data, if you're experiencing anxiety or experiencing you know, depression, that, that light is going to be most likely very amplified on oh, your yeah. psychedelic experience. So if you're not ready for that, if you go into thinking and saying, oh, this is just going to heal me. You're going to be in for a rough ride. That's going to be a freaking roller coaster. So, you know, I just want to emphasize to people like proceed with caution. It's a great tool, but it needs to be respected. It needs to be done the right set and setting, have the right people with you, use it appropriately. And then like yeah. what you're saying with, you know, the supplements, there's a reason why they're called supplements. They are a right. supplemental piece to a healthy lifestyle. And there's, you know, a while, because obviously a lot of my business is sharing my favorite supplements, you know, mushroom revival being one of them. And people will, will sometimes come to me and be like, oh, you're just saying we can just take supplements and do all this crap. It's like, no, like my point is, like you said, this is 
either a the jump start to get you going or the icing on the cake to take yeah. things to the next level and that's yeah. what they supplement it's not the one all be all it's a supplement yeah. to a healthy lifestyle yeah it's like gear lube for your bike but you have to pedal the bike right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'm sure you can get away with just taking mushroom supplements and nothing else but you also got to do the work you know right. um and this is for everything i mean and it's also like as I was explaining before, like, don't also get caught in the trip of thinking you're doing the work when you're actually not. Right. Um, and maybe that is one step in the right direction. And then you'll have a realization of, oh, this whole time I thought I was doing the work and I'm really not. Um, who knows? I mean, like, whole, I think whole it's another rabbit hole. <laughs> it's all good. And there's so many layers to right. the journey, which is awesome. Uh, and it's so fun to go down and, uh, and to just keep on peeling back the layers and, and, you know, thinking, you know, and then the more, you know, the more you, you don't know. Right. <laughs> and, and that's fun. You know, it's, it's, it's fun to peel back the la layers or as, you know, I, Sarah Berquist actually had a great example, which I, um, I quote her all the time of, she was talking about these false plateaus and it's like you're walking up a mountain and you think that's the peak in like 200 feet. And you're like, oh, yeah, I've climbed so far up this mountain, almost at the top, you know, nowhere else to go. I've learned everything I could or whatever. You get to the top and it's a false plateau. And there's like another mountain right behind it. But it's this infinite journey of false plateaus where once you reach the quote unquote peak right behind hiding behind it, it's another peak, you know? Um, and that's a great analogy for really pretty much anything in life. Um, it's, it's an infinite journey of, of always, always learning more, always growing. Absolutely. And for anybody listening, Sarah Berquist was one of our professors, um, at UMass Amherst where Alex and I took a number of classes together and she was phenomenal. I actually ended up TAing her class. Um, oh, cool. Time. So that was, so yeah, so she was great. She was a really great person. And, you know, it, it's like you're saying, it's, it's part of the game of life. We get up, we think we're at the top and then we realize, wait, I actually have to go into that valley and there's actually a bigger mountain over there, but I go on, got to go into the valley first to get to that bigger mountain. Then I get there. I think that's the end. And the, it's just this constant evolution. And I think that's where, like in this Western philosophy of, life isn't linear and that's i think we're often fed is like you go to high school you go to college you get a job you retire and then it's you know just like this linear path but for most people it's not the case and i think that we're recognizing that as a human species right now is that if you look at nature nature goes in cycles like the trees i'm looking at outside my window right now have lost their leaves and in the spring they're going to grow some new leaves and in the fall they're going to lose them again and it's a cycle it's not just one direction it, it's we go in these these cycle cyclical patterns in our lives and that's part of the beauty because if life was just this linear path it'd be pretty darn boring so you know that's something that i think is just really important for people to note as we're as you're listening to this is like hey if you're going through a tough time right now that's part of the game it's part of the game. And if you think of any movie, if you watched a movie that was all butterflies and rainbows, but like, oh, this shit's boring. I'm not watching this anymore. Like every good movie has a challenge. It's the hero's journey that we see with so many different movies. It's the same frame. You can look at Lion King. You can look at Spider-Man. You can look at whatever. It's the same model. It's there's the main character. They have a challenge. They overcome it. And it's, it's like, you know, obviously I'm really generalizing, but it's with our life and it's our life as well. We're all going to have these ups and downs. And that's part of the ride. Do you think we have free will? <sighs> Here, I'm, I'm interviewing you now. <laughs> Man, I go back and forth. Like, I like to think so, but I think that could be part of the delusion as well. I, it's, I've gone back and forth that I don't have a good answer on that. I really don't. I don't either. I don't either. I, and I don't think I'll ever know. I don't think we ever will. I don't know. Yeah. You know, tough. yeah, it's, it is, it is, it is interesting for sure. And especially as we're going more and more into the metaverse and, you know, with Neuralink and all these crazy mm -hmm. technology advancements, and we were going, we're heading very fast into the point of singularity, very, right. very 
very fast. Unbelievable. It will happen in our lifetime 100%. And that is, I'm trying to keep up. I'm here. I am trying to study mushrooms and I'm just like, wait a second. I, I need to keep, keep a tab on all these crazy technology advancements because this will change the face of the planet as we know it. Right. Right. And how we interact with the world and how we interact with mushrooms or wellness or supplements or business or anything that we're doing. uh, It goes through that framework. I mean, here we are talking through zoom and the internet, right. And through a laptop, this wasn't possible, you know, 30 years ago. It wasn't even possible like 10 years ago. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, so what's it going to be like in 10 years? Right. right? And, and I think whether you study anything or whether you're interested in anything, I think it is important to keep a tab on where technology is going. And I know a lot of people are, are super against it and whether you're for it or against it, you should still learn about it. Right. Right. Cause it's going to happen whether you like it or not, you know, 5g is going to happen, whether you like it or not, genetic Mm -hmm. engineering is going to happen, whether you like it or not. All the, the metaverse is going to happen, whether you like it or not, you know, um, people tracking your data, that's going to happen, whether you like it or not, like extra, yep. everything's going to happen. Uh, because yeah. The, um, so yeah. Uh, and yeah. And even, yeah. So <laughs> we can go down. That. I can, can I can go, go down. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to hold off my, <laughs> trying to hold the reins on that one. I, I can go down that rabbit hole for many hours, but well, you know, just to kind of wrap up that point, because we we get a whole friggin' three hour episode about that. Yeah. But, you know, that's what really fascinates me about things like cryptocurrencies and NFTs and all these type of things, which I try not to give all my energy towards because I, I could spend a full time lifetime studying that thing and still just scratch the surface of it. But like you said, it's important to have a, ta- in my opinion, it's important to just have a pulse on like just have, I want to have my finger on the pulse. I don't want to be in right. I just want to like, just be like, all right, I kind of, get, I, I have a basic understanding of what's going on because like you said, whether you like it or not, it's coming. And you know, the people that accept that and again, ride that wave, you don't have to be the pro, you don't want to be the Laird Hamilton pro surfer on the wave, but if you can just, if you can swim, you can swim in that little river. You'll probably be all right. Yeah. I think a lot of our, this, this extreme divide in our society right now, Right. I mean, it's happened throughout whole, all history. We love sure. conflict right. <laughs> as it, humans. It makes, we money. Love, makes people a lot of money. Yeah, for sure. Like having two sides is easy. You know, it gives you something to it's it's easy psychologically to have another, you know, right. the other that you have to battle or whatever. Um and it's really easy to just not understand quote unquote, the other, whatever it may be, uh, whether it's another race or nationality or thought process or whatever this divide that exists. And it's easy to not understand. And through not understanding, it's way easier to vilify them. Right. Right. And make them into this evil thing. Um, and I, I see this all the time. I do it. And it's, also a practice of me of, of trying as much as possible to step in the other shoes. Like when I was a kid, I, I, I went through a time where I, I completely vilified business and capitalism and, you know, and I didn't understand it. Right. right. And I just immediately, just cause my group of people around me were all in this echo chamber of that's what I was hearing of like, this is all bad. It's all bad. It's evil. Write it off immediately. And I never, because I wrote it off, I never educated myself. Okay. What's going on. And now it's a practice of, of me starting my own business and be like, okay, what's this thing all about? You know, how can I educate myself if I'm truly going to take a stance, you know, I, whether I like something or not, it, it, I think it's important to educate yourself, whatever the topic may be. It's easy to write something off, right? It's so easy to write things off that you don't understand. Um, and, and most of the time too, man, it's like we we tend to vilify things we don't understand. And that's usually the things that we are you know, saying is the other, the things that are yeah. bad, the things that we label, that we judge. 
because we don't understand them. And same thing yeah. for me, you know, there's so many things that if you asked me five years ago, I'd say they were bad. And yeah. now, you know, I'm really coming to the point where I'm trying not to label anything as good or bad. They're just there. They're a neutral thing. It's only my judgment and my, pers- my perspective, which is giving them that label. Cause we can be looking at the same object and I can say, Oh, that thing is terrible. And you can say, well, that's pretty cool. I think. I- and that's only in our minds. So I'm trying to look at everything as neutral and it's just how we perceive it and how we utilize that, that tool, that object, that whatever that gives it the, you know, the label. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, I'm, I'm trying as hard as possible not to actually say anything, any of the trigger words, but, um, Damn, I don't, it's free flow. You probably, I mean, you could probably plug in any of the fill in the blank trigger word of, of things that people don't understand on, on both sides. And, you know, it's just like, it's a trigger and it's like immediately, it's easy to join a side, right? Um, right? And it's much harder to stay in the middle and to educate on on both. And I just, it's a juicier journey, I think as well to, to like stop yourself from that immediate pull towards a side and just, you know, figure out what's going on. Um, and I think that's why we're all here just to figure out what's going on and not to label things immediately good or bad. You just, what is this? What is arising, right? Um, I think that's power. And it is, you know, it is, that's a privilege. I'm coming from a privileged place of like being a white male who's pretty well off financially and able-bodied, et cetera. Like it's easier for me to take a neutral place. And I understand, like, it's easier, you know, I'm, I'm, and I have a choice to choose not to work a hundred hour weeks. Right. And it's, right. so it's easier for me to now that I'm not working hundred hour weeks to be a little more neutral. Right. And to right. have a, a wellness practice that I can uh, not be so quick to make a decision. But, you know, I think it's that intention of um, yeah, I, I think it's a cool, it's a cool practice. I, I've been really, that has been another one during this pandemic of you know, um, especially in this, like such a heated society that we're in, you know, and everyone's stressed out. Everyone's so stressed out on the edge of burnout, like we're in burnout. And it's just like, it's so easy to just be like, okay, I'm picking that side. I don't have the mental capacity to think about this right now. I'm just going to pick a side. It's easier and go gung ho, you know, and, um, life gets more interesting when you pause and, and like, you know, be in that moment of, of contemplation. hundred percent. Well, we can go down that rabbit hole for forever. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit to mushroom revival itself, because this is, you know, again, you've been doing this for quite some time now. And, you know, I've been using your product for quite some time now. I've always got this little, uh, mushroom revival focus next to my desk when i'm writing something it's always right there so good so so you know you've got some great products and i want to just know for you personally because you've been using them for a while what is your practice with the products because i would imagine that's probably i think i asked you this on our first podcast two years ago i'd imagine that that's maybe changed a little bit like what is your your daily routine of using them look like i slurp up as much as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I take a bunch of, I, I use them multiple times a day, all of them. Um, so for a while we had, I mean, our whole product line has changed, you know, from the first time you had ever interviewed me until today, like today it's November 16th on the day we're recording this. I don't know when you plan to launch it, but you know, we're, we're launching three new powder products right? Uh, and then last week we launched four new capsule products and it was the, the world's first USDA certified organic mushroom capsules in the world, you know, which was awesome. That's a, that's it was super cool. Thing. Congrats. And, and for a while we had four tincture products and tinctures for people that don't know they're liquid extracts. And so they're easy. You could take it straight up, you know, on your tongue or in your drink. 
and they're super bioavailable. They're, they're fast acting. And, um, I really like tinctures, but I also really like, and a lot of people, what they feel comfortable with is a powder or a capsule. Right. Uh, and I was a little hesitant to launch them for a while because there's so many powders or capsules out there. So I really wanted to wait to do them right. Um, and so we, we did them right and we made them extremely potent. And from my knowledge of all the market research I've done, we have, we have the most amount of equivalent milligrams per serving of mushrooms that people are getting. And, um, we're still in the process of, of wrapping up our lab results, but people can see the, the transparent lab results for themselves and compare it to other companies out there. We were the first company to actually have our lab results transparent um, with a QR code. People can scan it and pull it up. We have it right on our website. All Whatever batch you have, you could pull that up and, and see the lab results. So this whole journey for me is to, you know, one, help revive people's health with functional mushrooms. And as I explained earlier, it's just, just that gear lube, you know, on your bicycle, it's just to help you out a little bit. And they're fantastic because how well-rounded they are. Um, you know, each mushroom has its own set of benefits, but they're all adaptogens, right? So they all help your body adapt to occasional stress. They all you know, are wonderful for supporting the immune system. And those two things just off the bat are incredible, right? We all can benefit from some adaptogens and some immune supporters, right? And then you get the more specialized uh, functions like cordyceps, for example, great for energy or lion's mane, you just brought up like amazing for supporting your, your cognitive function, your, your brain, your memory, um, reishi, great sense of calm. Like I have my reishi on my bedside table and the other three are, you know, in the supplement cabinet, I take that in the morning. And so it, it's cool. And, and I've always been on the fringe. I've always been a rebel. I've always been someone who likes, um, going against the grain, so to speak, and the kind of the black sheep of, of the crowd. And so mushrooms for me were that it was something that they were so cool, but yet like no one was talking about it by the time right. I, I came into it. Now it's really kind of blowing up, but right. still on a, there's so many people that don't know about mushrooms, um, and which is cool. It's awesome. It's cool to be part of something that's just picking up some momentum. And um, it, it's cool to see people change from thinking mushrooms are really gross and slimy and poisonous and weird to being obsessed with mm -hmm. mushrooms. And it's something, it's this phenomena that I see. And I was just talking to Lyra, my partner about this, uh, and she was talking to somebody else about this of like, there's no one that's kind of into mushrooms. Like I've never met someone that said, Oh, mushrooms are all right. Like either they hate them or they love them. And it's this phenomenon, like where you either ha like have this really grotesque experience with mushrooms, like either you hate them or you absolutely like are obsessed with them and you love them. Like they're, they're incredible. Uh, and, and that's cool. It's cool to see people switch to, and, and, you know, when they go on hikes now, they've been hiking the same trail for 10 years and they, and they send me a message and they're like, I didn't know there's so many mushrooms out here. I didn't know they existed, you know? Um, so that's super cool. And it, it's, it's great, you know, getting feedback of people having this, these, complete, you know, transformational experiences in their health. You know, they were struggling with something for decades and then finally something worked and they have that spark of like, wow, I can finally do this. Or, you know, I was struggling with this and total relief or whatever it is. That's awesome to read that, that feedback and you know, we also have our mushroom podcast. So like education, as I said in the beginning is huge for me. Um, and like seeing people turn on to that passion 
That's cool, man. We're, we're way beyond just a supplement company. I mean, supplements are great. I take them every day. I love them. But to see people get passionate about nature, that's, that's cool. I think that's the most rewarding thing. Well, I tell you, man, it's, it's, I get, I'm like a little kid. If I find some mycelium in some soil, I'm like digging it up and bringing it to my garden. Like I get so pumped. Like I was going out in my, my backwoods, like flipped over something, found some mycelium, took it, like took, like, I didn't take all of it. You know, got to leave some of it there, but took a nice handful, brought it into my garden. It's like, nice. Now I got that, that nice fungal, you know, bacteria, soil relationship going on. Like mushrooms are so cool and i think that you know when we really educate ourselves about them which again it's something i love that you you all do over there it's not just supplements it's education as well is we realize the potential of these mushrooms and how they realistically they're like the glue of this freaking planet they're the the communication system they're the 5g before 5g was around and they're doing it a lot more naturally without any side effects so i think it's really cool you know to dive into that world of of mushrooms and you know, again, a whole nother rabbit hole we go, go down. But I want to ask you, because you, you mentioned the release of the capsules. You know, what is the difference between capsules and tinctures? Like for me, I have a lot of different capsules. So I love the fact that you guys have tinctures because that's something that stands out. And I personally, I love the little zing of the, oh, of yeah. the tinctures. So what is the difference? Is there any absorption difference? And like, you know, any, any pros and cons to either? Sure. Yeah, I mean... I'll start off by saying 10,000 feet, it's what you're most comfortable with. If you like taking capsules and you feel comfortable taking those, take them. You know, if you already know what a tincture is and that's easy for you and, and you understand how it works, you already take other tinctures, like you can carry it around with you. If that's what feels comfortable for your routine, and take a tincture, right? Um, as long as mushrooms are getting in your bloodstream, that's all that matters, you know? And, and then to go into the nitty gritty, you know, like tinctures can be more bioavailable um, so they can enter your bloodstream faster. Uh, but you can also pack more per serving in a capsule, right? And, but, you know, you, your body has to digest the capsule. And so, you know, it's slower to get into your bloodstream, but the benefit is you don't have that taste. So a lot of people don't like the alcohol taste. So there's pros and cons to both. And, you know, I'd say whatever you feel comfortable with, right? Like I love taking tinctures. I love the taste. Uh, I want to taste that, right? I, I miss that when I take a capsule, but I also take a bunch of other capsules and just throwing it in the handful that I, I take is great. And I also freaking love that. Um, so I'll, you know, I take both and it, it is great. You know, um, I don't even choose one or the other. I take both of them love it. to get, to get the most out of it. The only thing for me, like we also are launching powders today for me, I don't have a routine where I'm, I'm not a big coffee person. So mm -hmm. And I, I used to be a big smoothie person, but now I'm not so much. And so powders are not me personally in like my routine anymore. I might change maybe next month. I'll report back that I'm a smoothie fiend or something <laughs> like that. Or I started making hot coffee um, or even cold brew. So that one, I'll still take the powders, but it'll be kind of a rare occurrence when I'm making an elixir or a brew or, or mm -hmm. something like that, or a protein shake or something like that. But for other people, right. They're like, I don't want anything to do with tinctures. I don't want anything to do with capsules. I hate the alcohol taste. I hate swallowing things. I want a powder, right. I'm, I make smoothie and coffee and oatmeal and all these things every day, a protein shake. When I work, work out, I already used four different types of powders, my protein, my collagen, whatever give me a, pro, give me a, a mushroom powder. And for that person, mushroom powder is for you. Right. Uh, so it's all, it's all up to the person. And, and we're also releasing the world's first USDA certified organic mushroom gummies. And those are coming soon. And we've been working on it for years now. And, uh, and there's tons of people that just like, 
they don't want the powders, capsules, or tinctures. And they are like, give me gummies. I want all my vitamins and gummies. Like bring me back to the days when I was a kid and I was eating Flintstone gummies. Like, like <laughs> that's all I want, you know? Um, so we're trying to make things for everyone. And I think that's at the end of the day, like pick what works for you. Right. Love it. Great. Well, as we're transitioning now, so the, is this, you know, this will be end of November as people are listening to this. What are some good mushrooms people can use for this fall winter transition? Because obviously, depending on where you're at, if you're up north, you're probably in the thick of late fall, early winter already. It's already getting cold for people down south, maybe not as much. But as you know, the seasons change, you know, our bodies are going to be going under a little bit of stress as we're adapting, you know, we're, we're kind of have that hormetic stress of the seasons and the, the temperature change. What would you recommend for some good mushrooms to help with, you know, this seasonal change into winter? All of them, honestly, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, seriously, all of them, because all functional mushrooms are great for supporting your immune system. Um, and also they're all adaptogens, right? So they, they help your body adapt to that occasional stress and, and just changes. Um, but if you are a person that really gets hit with and read between the lines, quote unquote, seasonal change, right. Um, and it affects certain bodily functions in a way I have to I'm saying read between the lines because I have to be compliant with the FDA and I can't say certain things, but um, then reishi. Reishi is amazing. It, it, it has a ton of these compounds called triterpenes, uh, mainly ganoderic acids that um, really help, you know, with seasonal changes, uh, you know, helping your body adapt to occasional stress, even you know, helping support your body's natural inflammation response post-workout or any normal activity like that. Um, so it's a great regulator, right? And helps wind down from that summer, go, go, go into more of a rest and re restore um, season of winter, right? That's what winter's all about. You're recouping, right. you're, you're getting ready for the next season. You're going into a mini hibernation. So I think Reishi is definitely a good ally, uh, in this time. Cool. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. But like you said, that's what I think the beauty is that these are all adaptogenic and they're going to give your body what it needs. And so I think that is one thing about, you know, mushrooms in general, that really fascinates me is their adaptogenic qualities is that these are things that can be used year round. And yeah, my first instinct when I think of winter is probably more on the ratio side or yeah. you know, also lion's mane, just because I feel like I'm doing a lot more intellectual things in the winter as opposed to yeah. physical things where I think of cordyceps is physical, kind of lion's mane is intellectual. And that's right. my, probably my own bias as well. But hey, no, yeah. I agree. I agree. And that's why I said all of them, because right. at the end of the day, like I could find a use case for every single one. Um, but yeah, I'd say reishi is a number one, but lion's mane, you're right. I mean, it's the time of year that you're, I, I have a cool kind of routine that I do every year on New Year's Eve mm -hmm. where, and I love photos for this, like the photos app in my phone or computer, it breaks it down by the dates, right? It shows you the dates from which you took the pictures. And I go like week by week and even sometimes day by day for the whole year, right? But that, you know, the whole previous year. And I'm like, just recapping. Okay. What happened this year? And I go mm. week by weekend with a journal and I, I, I recap. Cool. I think if you, if you do a practice like that, lion's mane would be awesome. Just thinking right. back, you know, <laughs> how have I grown? What lessons have I, have I gone through? What have I learned? And I'll, I'll write down the lessons of like, wow, you know, that month really learned the lesson of prioritization or whatever it may be and just recapping and then and then once you recapped it and you integrated your year then you're like okay what do i want for next year you know based on these lessons the the things like wow you know i i traveled this year and that really was the highlight of my year maybe next year i'll travel more or you know i spent some time with my family 
and that sucked or maybe it was good, you know? And, and so it's like, either I should process that more or like spend some more time with my family or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So lion's mane would be good for, for that mental processing. And, um, yeah, I agree. Well, you know, I, I like you brought up reflection and I think that's something that we, like we're saying, we're so easy to jump from one thing to the next that most of us don't take the time to reflect on just about anything. And yeah, that's yeah. something that I, you know, always invite everybody to do is like, Hey, if you just had an experience, like after this, after this podcast, we're done recording, rather than me saying, hey, I'm going to go jump right into work, I'm going to take a little walk and integrate what just happened. And that walk could be five minutes. I'm aiming, I'm going to go for probably 20, because that's usually my sweet spot. But just give yourself at least five minutes to like process what you just experienced. Because so many times we go through this, this hamster wheel of just do, 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 do. And then the day's over and people are like, what the hell did I do today? Because we didn't yeah. take a moment to freaking reflect. So we can do this on the micro level. You know, after every call, like I said, I take at least five minutes to just calm myself, you know, kind of let go of that energy. And there's a book, I think it's in, um, it might be in High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. And he talks about release tension and set intention. So after you do something, release, because we're all held on to something. You know, maybe I'm a little... In the stress response, I've been staring at a screen now for an hour, and that's, you know, causing a little bit of stress in my body. So, all right, release that tension. Now, set an intention for the next one. Like, give yourself a time to have the space in between the activities. And that could be on the micro cycle of the day to day. That could be in the macro cycle of the year. It could be on like the meso cycle of like a decade. But just taking time to reflect. That's something I really want to invite, you know, everybody listening right now is like, Take some time to reflect today. Sit down, disconnect from technology, take a little lion's mane from Mushroom Revival and just sit with yourself and enjoy that space because it's a beautiful space if we give ourselves the opportunity to sit with it. Agreed. Yeah, two, two little touch points on that because I love this topic so much, but I'll, I'll keep it brief because so many rabbit holes we're going down in this conversation. I love it. I mean, it's great, but we, so we're training Echo, right? Our puppy. And we hired this puppy trainer. We only have one session with him now. Um, and he would, he said, Hey, you should, I don't know if you've ever seen dogs like shake, you know, they just kind of flop around and they're, you know, yep. he says that's kind of their reset. Right. Yes. And, and most yes. animals Let's have go. it. You know, and like swans, if you go to the park, yes. and, you know, they'll like fight and, and then they'll just kind of flap away aggressively. And that's just like, you're resetting your body and dogs will do this too. And they'll yes. just kind of like, they'll wake up from a nap and they'll just kind of flop around or whatever. And the dog trainer was like, yeah, you should give them a treat and say like, good girl. Like every time they do that. And then you could actually train her to do that on command. And the second part of that is, you know, I, I read this study, uh, many years ago that, uh, and I'm drawing, I, I'm a little fuzzy on the details, but they, they recorded work habits from all these different people from all around the world on, on, you know, how often they should take breaks and for how long. And they found this, this perfect break time was around 52 minutes of working 17 minutes off. Mm. And that might seem like a lot for some people are like, dude, 17 minutes every 52 minutes. I mean, that's a lot of break time throughout the day. That's insane. But I started practicing this and, and I did it through the whole time I wrote my book and I wrote a 230 page book in like three months. Wow. I mean, I, I cranked it out. And the whole reason I could even do that and I still do it now is that I let myself take those breaks to step away totally reset where it's, whether it's walking around the block or doing a quick workout or taking a, a power nap mm -hmm. even, or like laying on an acupressure mat or meditating, or just like playing with a dog, playing video games, drawing, whatever the hell it is. And then when you come back to doing what you're doing, you are laser sharp. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, you hear a lot of people say, you know, I have my epiphany moments in the shower. Yes. 
right? So it's allowing yourself to have those epiphany moments where you're doing something other than the task that's on hand. And you're allowing yourself to get in that flow state and you're allowing yourself to just integrate what you're doing. And, and these, the scientists said like, most humans attention span cannot last over 52 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so like, we've been sitting over an hour or this and like, you just say, Hey, I've been noticing a little bit, like some things are arising. It's like, yeah, that's in human nature. It's like over 52 minutes, we start to get distracted. We start to, you know, and then our performance just plummets. Right. Um, and 17 minutes over that, it's like, then we get more, zoned into whatever that distraction is. And then it's harder for us to get back into what we were doing. And so 5217 has been super powerful for me. Maybe I brought it up in actually our earlier podcast because I've been loving this routine for the last few years or so. It's been it's been phenomenal for me. I love it, man. You know, and, and we'll start to wrap it up because you know we we can again keep going down these rabbit holes. But on the point of like the fifty two seventeen, if that sounds like a lot to somebody, think about if you're going to an eight hour workday, and then you're taking eight hours off. And I think that this fifty two seventeen is very helpful for entrepreneurs who have a little bit more flexibility in their own schedule. Right. And that's like for me, like again, a typical call for me is anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. And then I like go for like a little break. And usually it's about 15 minutes. So that's kind of funny how you know it's it is that like I'll sit in the You're sun. You're on it or, already. Yeah, sit, sit in the sun or go for a walk <laughs> or whatever. But that's the reset button. I can't just crank all day. My brain just doesn't work that way. Like you said, my quality of work just plummets. Yeah, it's burnout. It is. And I'm really glad you brought up the shaking piece too, because it's funny. I have a, a community that I work with. So basically it's group coaching um, that I'll do once a week. And yesterday um, I had everybody do some shaking. And just like I was saying, like, think of a dog, think of an animal, think of a child. The kid is the most pissed off little human you've ever seen. They're crying, they're screaming, they're flailing, they're shaking their body. And two Calm. minutes later, they're laughing, they're playing again. It's yeah. like they re they purged it. And that's what, yeah. you know, energy, emotion is energy in motion. We want to yeah. move that energy through our body. And the shake is one of my favorite tools. So I'm glad you brought that up because we can learn a lot by looking at babies. We can learn a lot from looking at dogs and animals in the natural world. So yeah, man, this has been uh, a lot of fun rabbit holes. Uh, again, I think we could have made 10 different episodes of each. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> I love how it, like the mushrooms part of it was like only five minutes. This right. is great. So many. Yeah. And I feel like every single topic that we started to go down, I feel like we cut it, cut it. Hell, we're like, wait, 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 right. that was a whole nother 10 hour conversation right there. It's cool. It's juicy life. A lot to talk about. I'm, I'm excited for next year. Then we could, uh, open some more portals and rabbit holes that we can go down Absolutely. and we'll see where, where, where we both are then. For sure. Well, you know, kind of closing thoughts. I just want to, you know, have you share the vision for 2022 where people can follow along, get tapped in. You know, I got the discount code for all the, the people here who want to embark on the mushroom revival product line. So what's the vision for 2022 for mushroom revival for Alex door. And then we'll uh, send everybody home with some nice uh, mushroom products to try. Absolutely. We've been head down trying to make these um, freaking incredible products. And I'm, I'm coming from my own, you know, I've dealt with various health issues. Um, and so I, I, sometimes it's not in our best interest to be as meticulous as we are. Right. I mean, we're cutting we're not making as much profit because we're doing a lot of things that like from a business angle doesn't make the most sense, but from making the best products, we're doing that. Right. And that's what we're most um, focused on is just making products that really work and that they're the most potent. So we had the line of tinctures. We just launched the first USDA certified organic mushroom capsules in the world. We are just launching these three mushroom powders today. We got four mushroom gummy products coming soon, all organic, vegan. The gummies are, I mean, the capsules are vegan too. And then for 2022, we have six new products and, you know, they're first on the market, very other ones that we've been working on for years. I mean, we we're just 
cranking on on uh, creating these new pathways in which people can form a relationship with these mushrooms, which is super excited. So keep keep that on your radar. Use use the whole health coupon code. Um, tune it if you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole of just mushroom education. We have a whole mushroom revival podcast where we bring on an expert every week and talk about a mushroom topic. Um, apart from that, you know, we'll be traveling all over, you know, we'll be teaching a course in Guatemala on mushrooms. We'll be in Serbia in also in the fall for a mushroom event, um, bunch of other places, but yeah, stay tuned. We'll be teaching some classes. So if, if you want some more one-on-one -on -one education deeper than the podcast, check that out too. It's all on mushroomrevival.com and yeah, much love everyone. Love it, brother. Well, dude, thank you so much for being here. This is always, always fun. So we'll keep this uh, fall annual podcast. Uh, now it's a trilogy. We'll have to make it a, a fourth episode pretty soon. But for love everybody it. listening, if you haven't listened to the first two, I will link those in the show notes here so you can uh, zoom back and see the the progression of this, maybe in backwards order, maybe start the first one, where, however you want to go about it. But hey, Alex obviously is a great dude. We've known each other for a number of years now, since like 2015, 2014, somewhere in that realm. And it's been, you know, it's been a fun journey just to see his evolution, see our evolution. And, you know, we're keeping it going. So, you know, we appreciate you tuning in and man, thank you for being you, my friend. And we'll be minting this, this trilogy as an NFT. So <laughs> <Let's go>. uh... <laughs> <laughs> starting at six ETH. <laughs> yep yep let's go let's go cool thanks y'all all right my brother appreciate you thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast hope you enjoyed this conversation that we had going all over the map we had a lot of fun hope you enjoyed it if you want to check out the first two episodes i put we'll put those links in the show notes here and if you want to enjoy the mushroom revival products try all the cool new stuff they got going on head to mushroomrevival.com use a discount code whole health and you can also go to mushroom revival on instagram check out the page there they got a lot of great education check out the podcast like alex was mentioning and follow along with the journey. I appreciate if you share this podcast, if you found this to be valuable. You know, if you see any value in this, share this with a friend. Because that's how we spread the message of health and wellness. That's how we get the world healthier, happier, more sustainable. They do plant one tree for every product they sell. So, you know, they're doing their part as best they can using their glass bottles. So let's continue to grow and flow together, my friends. Please subscribe to the podcast if you enjoyed this. If you're watching on YouTube, um, the subscription is always appreciated. Any way we can share, like, subscribe, do all the cool things. So I appreciate you listening. Have the best day ever, and I'll talk to you soon.